Hello and welcome to this series of hardware lessons from a social and ethical perspective. Today we're going to look at some of the wonderful ways computers have changed our lives for the better. These days we have computers everywhere. Have you noticed how often we use computers in a single day? We have computers in our schools, in the banks, in shops, in offices. They're all around us. Can you imagine what the world was like before we had computers? Well, only 20 years ago there were very few computers around. People sent mail through the post. Prices were entered manually at the shopping tills. Cars couldn't talk and cell phones did not exist. In this lesson, we're also going to find out how computers help us in our daily lives. To help in our investigations, we're going to visit a few places and at each one we'll compare how computers are being used and what it was like before computers. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to describe how computers are used today in different areas of public and personal life and state some benefits of using computers in different situations. So, fasten your seatbelts because this lesson is going to take us to all kinds of places where computers are being used. Our first visit is to a factory where they make cars. This factory uses computers to control the robots that assemble the cars. The sequence of steps in which the cars are built up is called an assembly line. Did you know that at the car factory, one car comes out of the assembly line every three minutes. Can you imagine how this car would have been built up in the old days without any computer technology? Here's a similar factory many years ago. Do you see that the workers are standing in one place and doing the same task repeatedly as the cars pass by? I'm sure you agree that this must have been very tiring and boring. Which process do you think is more efficient? Well, using computers to manufacture cars makes the entire process much more precise and reliable. Okay, next we're going shopping with Archie and Salai. Wow, man, this is a large supermarket, eh? Wow, and look how much stuff that guy's buying. Entering the prices for all those items should take a long time, but not with computers. This store uses barcode scanners to scan in the prices of each item. As the barcode is swiped over the scanner, the price of the item is automatically entered into the computerized till. Now, this shopper is buying her items in a shop where the cashier has to type in the price of each item manually. This means it takes much longer for her to pay for groceries and there's a greater chance of making a mistake. Ah oh man, I'm tired of standing in the queue. <laughs> wow, look how much that lady's buying. Computers have also changed the way we park our cars. This is the parking area in a large shopping center. When this motorist drives into the parking lot, he's given a ticket by a computer. When he's ready to leave, he inserts the parking ticket into the pay point. This machine is a computer which works out how long the car's been inside the parking lot and then tells the motorist how much to pay. This man has to pay 3 rand for his parking. He puts a 10 rand note into the pay point machine and it gives him his change. When the motorist leaves the parking garage, he puts his paid up ticket into yet another computer. This computer checks the ticket and automatically opens the boom gate to let the car out. Parking lots which do not have computers to read parking tickets have parking attendants at the exits. The attendant tells the motorist how much to pay and gives the correct amount of change. Okay, no time to rest, it's off to the gym next. This machine is called a body IQ machine and inside this box there's a smart little computer. This computer will read all your body's vital signs and tell you how healthy you are. So, Archie puts his gym card in the slot and places his arm inside the machine. 
the body IQ then takes his blood pressure. Normally, we have our blood pressure taken by a nurse or a doctor. But now the computerized body IQ machine can do this for you without a professional being present. It can also help you monitor your weight and body fat percentage. You need to remember though that these machines cannot adequately interpret your readings, diagnose any conditions or give you sound professional advice. As you can see, computers have become a part of our everyday lives, from shopping, to parking, to exercise. Everything around us has become faster and easier thanks to the use of computers. So far, we've looked at computers being used in public life such as factories, shopping centers and so on. But what about the individual like you and me? Well, let's go and meet Vuyo. Vuyo is a teacher at a secondary school. Can you think of ways that Vuyo would use a computer? He has Vuyo at home with his computer. He has a lot of things to do today. Vuyo wants to prepare worksheets for different groups of learners, record the portfolio and test marks of his learners, fix up a document where he spelled the same word incorrectly many times and place a photograph in an assignment. Let's start with the worksheets. Each year, learners do a project based on these worksheets, but each year Vuyo has to change the topics which learners will investigate. This worksheet is one that they did last year. Vuyo now wants to change the topics for the new group of learners. This is easy with the use of computers. Vuyo just deletes the previous topics and types in the new ones. Now for the test marks. This is the spreadsheet which Vuyo uses to record the portfolio and test marks for his class. As he types in marks from their latest test, the spreadsheet calculates the new totals for each learner. The computer program is able to calculate these totals for him. What else is on Vuyo's desk? Here's a one-page document which Vuyo prepared for his class. In the document, he used the name Bususiwe 10 times, but he spelled it incorrectly. Now he needs to change the name in all 10 places. Does Vuyo look upset about having to make all the changes? Not at all. It's very quick and easy. All he has to do is use the Find and Replace option in his word processor and all the changes are made automatically. Now, Vuyo wants to place a photograph in this document. Vuyo uses his digital camera to take the photograph. Then he plugs the camera into his computer, transfers the photograph and inserts the photograph into the document. All that work only took a few minutes, thanks to the power of computers. Now, let's pretend that Vuyo was working 20 years ago. Back then, there were very few computers around and computers used in homes was unheard of. So, here's Vuyo at his desk again, preparing worksheets for his learners. To create the worksheet for the next group of learners, Vuyo needs to type up an entirely new sheet using his typewriter. This is the mark book in which Vuyo keeps the test marks. When he needs to work out the averages for the term, he must manually add up all the marks using a calculator. Here we see Vuyo trying to fix up his document with all the spelling mistakes. He's using Tipex to block out all the places where he wrote Busisise instead of Busisiwe. He must then wait for the Tipex to dry before he can rewrite Busisiwe over the white part. And what about the photograph? First, Vuyo has to take the photograph with his film camera. He then hands the film into the lab for developing. In a day or two, his photos will be ready. Now he can cut the photograph into the right shape and glue it into his document. Can you see how much longer it takes Vuyo to do these tasks without a computer? Using a computer certainly saves Vuyo a large amount of time. 
Before we finish this lesson, let's quickly look at two more areas where computers are making a big difference in our lives, communication and entertainment. Nigel, Diasha, Alvin and Candace are friends who live in four different countries. They talk to each other every day, but not on the phone. They use email to communicate. Here we see Nigel typing an email to Diasha. When he's ready to send the email, he clicks on send. And Yasha is able to download and read this email within a minute or two. Email has totally changed the way we communicate. It's fast, it's cheap, and it's environmentally friendly. Think about it, no paper is needed. Communicating through computers is a big topic and there's a lot more to discuss. We will explore this further in the series called e-communication. The last part of this lesson is all about computers and fun. What do you think? Have computers changed the way we entertain ourselves? You better believe it. Just think about computer games, digital effects in movies and computer animation. This is what entertainment in the 21st century is all about. Thanks to powerful modern computers, computer games have excellent graphics, exciting action and amazing sounds. Computers have also made it possible for movie makers to create fantastic special effects that were not possible before. Animated movies have also become much more sophisticated since computers using the latest 3D modeling technology have been introduced. Today we have looked at many ways in which computers have improved our lives. Now, here's a task for you to complete. Draw up a table to summarize the main points made in this video about where computers are being used, what they are being used for, and what the benefits of their use have been. Find a situation which you think could be improved by the use of computers. Say how and why the situation should be improved and how computers could help. Just remember, any new development has both positive and negative results. Computers have made some things much better, but they have also created some problems. This doesn't mean we shouldn't have computers, it just means that we have to manage their use carefully. In other lessons of this series, we explore some of these issues more fully. Well, that's all we have time for today. For more information, go to our website. And join me next time when we'll be talking about computers and our health. Bye-bye. <music>